All right, we're back. Let's do some exercises. Cool, so we're back in the IDE and I want you to do four exercises. First, I want you to overload the plus operator that we defined here. I want you to add another plus operator, which receives a string and it will return a new person with a nickname. So for example, if I say Mary plus the rock star, which you all guys are, uh, this will return another person with the name Mary with the parentheses, the rock star, as a nickname and the same favorite movie. All right, so overloading an infix operator. Now, second exercise is to add an age to the person class with uh, default zero value, if you will, if you want, and add a unary plus operator, which basically increments the value of the age and returns a new person with the age plus one. So if I say plus Mary, that will return Mary with the age incremented. This resembles the prefix plus plus operators that you've probably seen in Java or C++. All right, so this is good for an analogy. Okay, third exercise. I want you to add a learns method in the person class. This receives a string parameter and returns a sentence which says, Mary learns whatever you pass into it, say Scala. All right, so this will operate like that. Then after you do that, I want you to add a learns Scala method, which doesn't receive any parameters and calls the learns method with uh, Scala as a parameter. And I want you to use it in post fix notation. All right. And finally, I want you to add another apply method. So overload the apply method to receive a number and returns a string. And it will basically say mary.apply with uh, a number says, say for example, Mary watched her favorite movie Inception two times. All right. So I want you to overload the apply method to receive a number and it will say the person's name watched their favorite movie n times. So pause the video while you work through the exercises and I'm going to give you the solutions to these exercises in just a few seconds. So pause the video now. All right, the implementations are going to be very simple, but the use of them are going to be very interesting. So if we wanted to overload the plus operator, we only need to go to the person class and define another implementation of plus. So what did we say? We wanted to say marry the rock star. So this receives a string. Okay, so we'll receive a nickname, which is a string. And this will return a new person and it will return a new person with the name plus in parentheses. Let's actually use an S interpolated string. So we'll say name in parentheses nickname and the same favorite movie. Okay, so this will say, let's say, let's print line. Um, Mary plus the rock star and we want to let's say print out this little guy so if I put these in parentheses and then call them that would mean applying the method apply on the resulting object from this expression. All right, so if I right click and run, 
it will say, hi, my name is Mary the Rockstar, and I like Inception, of course. We could achieve the same effect, of course, by calling the apply method, right? So if I right click and run, I'm going to get the same output. Cool. So that was exercise number two. Now we add an age to the person class and I give you a hint to uh, give it a default value of zero. So let's just add it. Um, I'm going to add an age here as an int and give it a default value of zero so that it doesn't break the persons that we instantiate later in the code. All right. And we said we wanted to add a unary plus operator that actually increments the age by one and returns a new person. All right. So let's add it at the unary group here. So def unary underscore plus, and this returns a person. Again, bear in mind the space between the unary plus uh, method name and the colon which uh, will introduce the return type for this method. If you don't place in a space, the compiler will uh, wrongly assume that the colon is part of the method name. Of course, you can you can define uh, methods called unary dot uh, unary underscore uh, plus colon, but that will be just a method like any other. All right. So if you want to define a unary operator, it has to have the name unary underscore and then the operator that you want. All right. So this will return a person and say this will return a new person with the same name with the same favorite movie and age plus one. The implementation is very simple. All right, let's modify the apply method to Actually, uh, let's just test this uh, unary plus operator by calling in or accessing the age field, which, by the way, we need to make it a field by adding a val. All right. So if we print line uh, plus Mary, so plus Mary means Mary dot unary plus that we've just defined, and that is a new person. OK, and if I say plus Mary dot age, then this will return one because Mary was constructed as a new person with the age zero. If you remember, Mary was a new person with Mary in the inception, not supplying the age parameter means that the age is zero and plus Mary will make a new person with the age equals to one. So if I print this out, I'm going to see the value one in the console. Of course. So this is the approach that you would take when defining a unary operator. OK, so this was exercise number two. Exercise number three says add a learns method and a learns scala method. All right. I'm going to add these right here uh, below. So I'm going to add a learns method, which uh, gives uh, th uh, receives a thing that we want to learn, which is a string for simplicity. And let's just say that this returns a string and it's an S interpolated string says um, dollar name is learning thing. All right. The implementation is um, up to you. All right. Then we have the learns scala method, which doesn't receive anything. And the implementation is going to be this learns scala. All right, so let's use these. So if I go back and I print line Mary learns Scala, this is the postfix notation that I told you about in the previous video. And that means Mary dot learns Scala, which in turn calls the learns method with the Scala parameter. So like this. So I should be expected to, uh, to see what is it? Mary is learning Scala in the console. Right. So let's click and run. And of course, we see Mary's learning Scala to the console as expected. All right. Now, the fourth exercise is also pretty simple. So we need to overload the apply method to take an int parameter and uh, return a string saying name watched favorite movie and times. This is very simple. So let's say def apply with uh, n which is an int, and this returns a string. And um, again, this is an S interpolated string because it's so easy to construct. And it'll say 
name watched favorite movie n times all right and that's that if i print line mary called with the parameter 10 that actually as we discussed in the previous video that actually tells the compiler to use the apply method with a parameter 10. so if i right click and run i should expect to see mary watched inception 10 times of course all right people let's wrap this up with some takeaways so if we define a person class which on this screen looks very similar to what we wrote in the code we learned about method notation so for methods that only receive one parameter we can actually call them like object method parameter in with spaces in between them this makes Scala very similar to natural language this is called infix notation and only works for methods with one parameter you've also learned about unary operators so if you call this guy with bang and then the object being called, this is called a prefix notation and actually delegates to the unary underscore bang operator in this case. This is only allowed for a number of operators, plus minus tilde and bang. We've also learned about postfix notation. That is, for methods that do not have parameters, we can actually call them with a space in between. The postfix notation is a little bit rarely used in practice because it can cause confusion when reading code. Again, this is only available for methods with no parameters. And last, you've learned that apply methods are special because they allow you to call your objects like they were functions. All right, this is Daniel. We're wrapping up this very important topic that we're going to make use of throughout the entire course, and you're surely going to use this in your Scala code. I can't wait to see you in the next video to show you more.